I shall start this video through here so that you can see this device bubbling in action. It's a tiny little aquarium pump, another of the Pizza Electric ones, which I'm about to explore. Uh, but some of you asked last time, uh, what's it look like when it's bubbling? And that's what it looks like when it's bubbling. It's a modest stream of bubbles. So let's go and take the, uh, take the power supply to bits. So here we are back at the bench with the new Pizza Electric pump. And uh, I've already opened one of these. I've smashed it open and this one is very similar inside. I'll show you inside under this rubber uh, cap. But I'm not going to smash this one open because it was quite destructive the last time. And I want this one to bubble my uh, copper chloride etchant I've been experimenting with. Incidentally, the copper chloride etchant has been foaming up quite badly when I put one of these pumps and air stones in. I'm not sure if that's normal or if it's just because the hydrochloric acid I got from the builder's merchant for cleaning concrete has other stuff in it, but it seems to foam up quite easily. So uh, this power supply is nice in that it's got the standard British plug assembly on it, which makes it a lot nicer than the last one, which was not, it was uh, two quite narrow pins and didn't go even go into adapters easily. So let's open this up and see if it varies much from the previous one. It's actually too wide. Um, screwdriver, screwdriver, is this going to fit, is this going to fit? Yes it is. It's probably not the right size, but with enough force it will work. Oh, quite long screws as well. So a couple of screws holding this shut, maybe three, I'm not sure if there's one hidden under the label or not. Let's uh, have a wee rub at the label and see if, a, if an indent appears. No, I'm not seeing it. Let's uh, No, it just doesn't unhook. Okay, it's different to the last one. Does this capacitor have a discharge resistor? Yes, it does look like it does. Let's put my finger across it anyway and that as well. Yeah, that's all the capacitor discharged. So what do we have here? AC 230 volt output, it says AC 120 volt. F1 fuse, that's interesting. This looks different, it looks like it's a, uh, hold on, I'm just going to doodle this down and we'll uh, follow it out and see how it compares to the previous one. The previous one was based on three resistors, if I remember correctly, it was based, the earlier one had three big resistors in series, then it had a filter capacitor and a small inductor, and then it went out to the Pete's electric disc. Okay, let's see how this one uh, compares. That also one also had a bizarre thing, if I remember. It had a resistor across there. So let's draw this one out. Means coming in. Let's uh, zoom down this little bit. We've got... It's going to uh, component marked F1. which looks like a PTC thermistor fuse. Hold on a second, I'm just going to uh, get the magnifying glass and have a closer look at this and see what it says. The number on it is JK250, which is the series 030. I think that's a 30 milliamp, a 30 milliamp uh, PTC thermistor, so let's say uh, mark that up as 30 milliamp. Then we've got a capacitor, and the value of the capacitor is six hundred and thirty volt. 684, so that's 6840, it's 680 nanofarad, because that's a picofarad. So 680 nanofarad, quite a high value capacitor at 630 volt. Quite a small physical capacitor for a, such a high voltage rating. Does that, yes it does have a resistor across it. The resistor across it is... Brown, black, black, yellow. Unfortunately, this one has the, uh, a brown tolerance colour code as well. Brown, black, black, yellow, which is one zero zero and four zeros, one six zeros. That's one megohm. 
Is that one meg ohm? Hold on, I'm just going to check that, the meter. It sounds about right for a discharge resistor. Let's uh, bring the meter in and stick it across that. Keep in mind, there is a capacitor in parallel with that resistor, so it's going to make it uh, read quite slowly. Well, actually, it went straight there. It is one meg ohm on the button. Perfect. So that is one meg ohm. Uh, then we've got the capacitor is going to a resistor with a value brown, red, orange. One, two, and three zeros is 12k. And that's in series with another resistor, which is 12k again. 12k. Then that's going to the same arrangement as before. It's uh, going to that little filter capacitor and an inductor which has the colour band uh, brown, green, brown, 1, 5 and 1, 0, so that's 150 microhenries. What about this capacitor? It's uh, 103, 630 volts, so that's 10 nanofarad, 630 volt. And then it's going out to the crystal, the transducer. So very similar to the previous circuit, the only real difference uh, is that that does make sense now for that resistor that had the other resistor across it because other people mentioned when I had that open that uh, it looked like a capacitor in that position, like it was uh, marked as a capacitor, but they'd used a resistor. I think they used uh, three 8K resistors, hadn't they? Or something like that. Uh, so that's uh, that aspect of it. Now, I have to say I screwed up slightly. When I got this, I saw the rubber suction cut and thought, oh, that will just be uh, held in by, you know, it'll just be sort of a push-in fit. It wasn't. There was a little black stem through it, which is now broken, which they must have, during the manufacture, they must have put it in, uh, put that little rod through from the inside and then physically glued it shut. I think this is glued shut. Well, we try prizing it open. You know, there's no harm, is there? What's the worst that could happen? I do kind of buy these things to to destroy anyway. Uh, I'm looking for my, I'm looking for my spudger here. There's my spudger. Let's see if this does open, if it, it might be glued shut, if it is. I'm not going to go and smash it open this time of night because uh, it is quite late and smashing things out of the hammer outside is always a wee bit pesky for the neighbours. Also, uh, I kind of want to keep using this one. It's just chewing up. I think that is glued. I think it is welded shut. Yeah, that feels too tight. What I can see inside, though, is if we zoom up and I shine a little bit of extra light, I can see the metalization of the piezoelectric disc. Let's uh, tame this down, shall we? I can see the metalization of the disc in there, suggesting that is the uh, active side of the disc with the metalization, the layer of the piezoelectric crystal, and then the uh, brass disc itself in here. And this will just be a, a disc, it will just be a piezoelectric transducer. And that's fundamentally it. That's kind of interesting. Now, I do want to see how hot these resistors get now, so I'm going to have to plug this in. Let's uh, plug it in now. Yeah, precarious. The pump is now running. Oh, that's also open there. I don't wonder how that affects the airflow. Still getting plenty of airflow out of it. Oh, some people are mentioning about these components here. I'll just push this out of the way because it is all live. I'm letting the stuff heat up. Let's uh, turn the thermal imaging camera on. So I can have a look at those resistors. Someone mentioned the last time that maybe all the filtering was to stop noise from the mains coming through because you get the um, you get the devices that actually transmit data along the mains wiring and a piezo electric transducer will reproduce reproduce any sort of sort of frequency from you know in the audible spectrum really. So maybe that inductor and this capacitor. Some suggest it might be a tuned oscillator, but keep in mind it is really just running, in this case, at 50 hertz. In America, it would be 60 hertz, or other whatever countries had the 60 hertz supply. But uh, some others thought maybe all this filtering is 
to try and remove noise before it gets to the transducer because otherwise that could potentially make loud hissing or, or tones um, from data or even think of a variable frequency motor drive uh, like a washing machine might have the variable frequency drive that makes that slight whistling noise because it's pulsing the motor on and off at very high speed that could uh, that noise could come through in the mains come straight through the circuitry and it could actually make a lot of noise from this like a loudspeaker so uh, now that this has uh, been running for a small length of time I've got the thermal imaging camera here let's expose this and uh, get the thermal imaging camera into it. So I shall focus down onto the camera here. This is where it all goes horribly wrong, isn't it? So uh, let's try taking exposure off and focusing down onto the camera. Is it going to focus down onto the camera? It's hard to say if it's focused down onto the camera or not. Let's try that again. It helps if I don't move it while it's trying to focus. It's not having a great time. There we go, that'll do. Uh, okay, so looking down at those resistors, they're currently at 90 degrees Celsius. They're actually dissipating a fair amount of heat. I think they're getting hotter than the previous one that had the three resistors spreading the dissipation. That makes sense because these resistors are smaller and they also... Um, they're effectively dropping a slight higher voltage because they're a higher value than the previous power supply. But having said that, there's a lot more space in this case um, to do that. So that's, that's interesting. I wonder why they've, they've done it this particular way. But yeah, that is, a, that is fundamentally it. Let's uh, try and focus back down onto there. It might not. Hold on. I'm going to put the light on again. It's going to be swamped out momentarily. And then I'll try focusing down, see if it does actually focus down. But that's fundamentally it. Very similar to the previous one in terms of the circuitry. And uh, very quiet like the previous one with that pizza electric disc. Oh, there is one other thing. In the instructions, which came in multiple languages, a lot quieter than that rubber suction cup's put in, it does say, and this is quite interesting, there is abnormal noise or cracking sound. Uh, the device is faulty. That suggests arcing, uh, which would uh, cross the disc if the disc were to fail and it was to basically track across inside it. Um, I'm not sure how likely that is with the pizza electric disc. Certainly that is quite a high voltage it's running at, at 120 volts-ish. Um, I can measure that voltage by precariously dabbing about in the back of this, but I'm not sure how accurate it's going to be because it's not going to be a very accurate waveform. Let's uh, try and uh, get this to sit so I can get the meter onto it. It's not going to sit. I shall try measuring but this is probably not going to be a nice round RMS figure. Let's say I measure it anyway. So we're looking for roughly 120-ish volts across that. Yeah, there you go. 100 uh, 120 volts, 118.8, 119 volts. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, I suppose, in a way, the capacitor uh, is being used in this instance, the, in the power supply, just as a sort of a, to try and reduce the dissipation somewhat. But those resistors are still getting warm. It's interesting to get the, the PTC thermistor in series with it. What that does is, uh, if the current gets too high, if it goes well above 30 milliamps, and that could happen if you had a lot of electrical noise, because uh, this capacitor would effectively, everything in here would try and shunt electrical noise. Um, that could actually cause a momentary increase in the current, and if it does pass too much current, this little resistor here will go uh, set a high resistance, but only until uh, you unplug it and it cools down again, because it does go so thermally. So that's interesting, very interesting. And now to go and experiment with this and see if my copper chloride etchant foams up again. Because uh, that is what I kind of got it for, and it is an interesting thing. It's been, been happening. It's just kind of, it stops me leaving it. The idea of copper chloride action is you leave it bubbling in the background, and it replenishes it with oxygen, but there is something that is causing that to foam up. I'm not really sure how to, to get rid of that foam without contaminating the chemical in some way. But there we go. An interesting little thing.